Welcome back, everyone. On this episode of Duty and Valor, you'll hear the story of a man who fought to change the course of his life. He was a man who, without regard for his own safety, volunteered for a risky mission during the Vietnam War. He was a man who jumped into action and fought through intense pain to save his fellow men from certain death. This is the story of Medal of Honor recipient U.S. Army Sergeant First Class Louis Rocco. Born on November 19, 1938, Louis Richard Rocco was the third oldest of nine children born to parents Louis and Lita. Though originally from Albuquerque, his family moved to California when he was 10 years old, and they eventually settled in the Wilmington neighborhood in Los Angeles. As a teen, Louis was running with a bad crowd and was continually in trouble with the law. In 1954, he was 16 and a member of a local gang when he was arrested for armed robbery. The seriousness of the situation was not lost on him and he knew he needed a drastic change in his life. On the day that Lewis was in court for sentencing, an opportunity arose. He was on break when he decided to walk into an army recruiter's office to see if there was any way he could enlist. There he met Sergeant Martinez, who was impressed with Lewis's honesty, so he returned with Lewis to speak to the judge. The judge decided to give Lewis a chance to change his ways. He suspended his sentence and allowed Lewis to enlist in the army when he turned 17, as long as he left his gang and obeyed an imposed curfew. Lewis stayed focused on his goal and enlisted in 1955. He received basic military training at Fort Ord in California before receiving advanced infantry and medical training at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. His first duty assignment was in Germany, and it was there that Lewis received his GED. Lewis served with the 504th and the 11th Airborne before finding himself serving in Vietnam. His first tour was from November 1965 to November 1966, where he served as a medical advisor to the Vietnamese 7th Division. He returned for his second tour in November 1969, again as a medical advisor of the Military Assistance Command, but this time to the Vietnamese Airborne, where he trained the South Vietnamese soldiers in basic medical care. On May 24, 1970, Lewis, who is now a Sergeant First Class, volunteered to assist in medically evacuating eight badly wounded South Vietnamese soldiers. He was aboard a 1st Cavalry helicopter approaching their objective when they received word from the personnel on the ground that they were being fired upon from the north, south, and east. Obviously, this left only one approach, but when the pilot was taking the helicopter in from the west, they were fired upon from all directions. During their approach to the landing zone, the men aboard the helicopter were firing back at the North Vietnamese. Lewis and another medic aboard were firing their M16s while the gunners opened up on the enemy with M60 machine guns. They made it to the LZ and began to hover down under heavy enemy fire. The situation was so bad that those on the ground urged the pilot to get out of there, but they were committed to land. The pilot took an AK-47 round to the leg and the helicopter was so badly damaged that it crashed to the ground. It came down on its side in an open field between the opposing fighters. With the helicopter on fire, Lewis jumped into action, even though he was badly injured himself. During the crash, he had sustained a fractured wrist and hip, as well as a painful back injury. Lewis grabbed the first injured and unconscious pilot and carried him to a large tree which offered only minimal protection from the enemy fire. Dodging enemy rounds, he returned to the crash site and grabbed the next unconscious pilot and brought him to safety. He then repeated this in an attempt to retrieve the two gunners. He was able to get one man out, but the other one unfortunately was trapped in the wreckage and didn't survive. By the time he made it to the helicopter to save the last man, who had a broken back and hip, it was nearly totally engulfed in flames and Lewis sustained burns to his face and hands. Now back behind the tree, Lewis began to treat the injured men. It took some time, but eventually the South Vietnamese were able to reach their position and move them back into their perimeter. They were under intense fire the rest of that day and into the next. The North Vietnamese forces were so close that they had to call in fire support dangerously close to their position. 
During this time, Lewis continued to treat the injured man until he fell unconscious due to the pain of his own injuries. On that next day, two more helicopters were shot down while attempting a rescue. It wasn't until they came in in full force with airstrikes and artillery support that a third helicopter was able to follow two AH-1 Cobra helicopter gunships into the area to evacuate the injured men. The helicopter's co-pilot, Lieutenant Lee Shabaro, successfully fought to see that Lewis was properly recognized for his heroism on that day. And on December 12, 1974, President Gerald Ford bestowed the Medal of Honor upon Sergeant First Class Lewis Rocco. During the years after he left Vietnam, Lewis continued his education and became a physician's assistant before retiring as a warrant officer in 1978. The following year saw him return to New Mexico as the director of the state's Veterans Services Commission. While in that position, he established the Vietnam Veterans of New Mexico organization. He also set up counseling services for Vietnam veterans as well as opening homeless and nursing homes for veterans. In 1991, Lewis returned to active duty during the Gulf War and he served at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas as a physician's assistant until the following year. He then moved to Mexico where he lived with his wife until 1998. He returned to San Antonio where he passed away on October 31st, 2002 and he is buried at the Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. Louis Rocco stands as a symbol of the extraordinary lengths to which individuals can go when driven by the will to serve and protect others. Despite the chaos of battle and the imminent danger surrounding him, Rocco willingly placed himself in harm's way to rescue fallen comrades in Vietnam. He demonstrated that valor is about an indomitable spirit that refuses to yield when others are in need. His actions went beyond the call of duty, reflecting an unwavering commitment to the principles of compassion, loyalty, and sacrifice. Thank you for listening to this episode of Duty and Valor. If you have not done so already, I kindly ask that you leave a review and follow us wherever you're listening as this small act helps us reach a wider audience. For those interested in learning more about Louis Rocco, I've provided links to all sources used in today's episode in the show notes and on our website, dutyandvalor.com. Don't forget to join us for our next episode where I'll tell you the story of another incredible American hero.